Gave you a minute When you needed a word Just to push it aside Instead of leaving me behind you I flipped out a little bit that I said Could have made you forget I had to tell her that it was one of the best songs she's ever written When Caleb likes a song, that, that means that I've done a good job Cause it was sick or sick We put it up on SoundCloud and it just kind of Installated really quickly. With one click, one upload, this brother and sister duo have been sucked into a machine. And you go from doing absolutely nothing to living your dream in like a matter of months. A music making machine intent on spitting out broods as the next big thing. Hello, hello. Any broods around? <laughs> the same machine that's shot other Kiwis to stardom. Shall we go meet Joel? And the key? This guy, Joel Little. Lovely to meet you. I'm Erin. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. This is where you do stuff with kind of exciting people, eh? Yeah. The guy instrumental in the success of Lord. And the Grammy goes to Royals by Joe Little and Ella Yelich O'Connor Lord. Oh wow, oh man, this is intense. Georgia and Caleb Knott are his next musical proteges. So within the whole getting an album out process, where are you at? Right at the very beginning. Does it feel like the start of something big? We'd love for it to just keep keep getting bigger and keep getting more exciting and I think um, we can only hope that this is going to be a lifetime thing for us. Georgia and Caleb had performance in their blood growing up in small town Nelson. These two had seen success before on a high school level winning the rock quest in a band called The Peasants. of Smoke Free Rock Quest 2011 are the Peasants from... Little did they know that watching the performance was Ashley Page, the man who would become their manager. When you hear some people's voices at that age and the female voice isn't going to change that much, it's, it's above and beyond. They stand out so far above and beyond um, most singers that it's something that's a little bit special. And Ella Yelich O'Connor as Lord was exactly the same. Um, let's just play it back and get your level. Cool. Fast forward just a couple of years and now the pressure is on from their international record label to get their first album out. Cool. This is where it happens? Yeah, here and in there. That's where um, Georgia and Caleb spend a lot of their time in there singing. And I just crack the whip from here. How do you do that? <laughs> Demonstrate yell, cracking words. I press this button and then I yell into that microphone <laughs> like a maniac. So I can be like, that was the shittiest take I've ever heard. Hey, really nice work. <laughs> uh, and the pressure is as big as it gets. The first ever band to be signed sight unseen by their record label. Uh, the only thing... Sorry. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> That's how I tell Joel that I've made a mistake. <laughs> It's now big business and a deadline. Broods have to deliver. It is a lot of pressure, but you can't let it get to you at all. It is a big system to enter into. Once the machine starts, it's fast. You know, you, you make one record, you make one single that goes well, then people want the next two or three singles as well, you know, almost instantaneously, so that those plans can be put in place to follow it up. And suddenly then they need the album, and then suddenly then you need to be touring through that whole period as well. In the next three weeks we're doing eight shows, two in LA, two in New York, two in San Fran, two um, UK at this point. And, um, Could be more. Yeah, things always come up. You think you have free time and then it's just like, oh, by the way, you know how you were free that day. You've actually got this, 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 this and this. <laughs> but, you know, keeps us busy. It takes all this and more to shape a small town duo into a global brand. 
publicity shoots. Maybe we just pull that up just a little bit more. I've been infected with restless whispers and cheats that manifested in words and love that just be Photos that will make the pages of influential music magazines. Love it, love it, love it, yeah, yeah. Words and love that just be Nice. Interviews for radio, TV and blogs. Hi, I'm Georgia. I'm Caleb. And uh, we're Broods and we're on Ones to Watch Live. Each time, a new look, a new story. Ford Moore. Giving another piece of themselves away. We didn't really like photo shoots at the beginning. <laughs> We've have really bad at them. We'd just be like, uh, what do you want us to do? Uh, smile? No? And we were just so bad at it. We, couldn't, we couldn't take it seriously. But they know they too have a role to play in this game if they're to make it. Then you kind of realise that, um, you know, people appreciate it when you do just like get in there and do the job. And, and I think it happens a lot quicker. Yeah. What's the most bizarre question you've ever been asked? What do you have in your pockets right now? Oh, yeah. We get some really weird, like. It was a good one. Like tissue debris. Yeah. And the most stupid question. How, How did, did you meet? meet? <laughs> so dumb. Did you answer? I was just like, well, one day, 19 years ago, I came popped out, out of, popped womb. out of the womb and Caleb was right there, two years old. <laughs> Coming up after the break, broods on tour across America. The reality of being on the road. You don't see any avocado on vocals there, Caleb. Okay. They'll probably look at me weird and go, what? Why do you want that? That sounds horrible. And a special homecoming. Hello, beautiful. Place they call La La Land. How's yeah. the heat? <laughs> really, really hot. Swinging by Caleb and George's hotel. It's Willy Wonka. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Only in LA. We start the day with a good breakfast, American style. Who's hungry? I am very hungry. I don't know if I'm ready for this menu. Fried chicken and waffles, anyone? Could I maybe order avocado and toast? On the avocado and toast? And a, a lemon. Is that alright? Great toast. Fueled up for another day in the machine. Average day on tour. We'd probably start early in the morning. With a really early flight. And go to the next city. Someone will pick us up for doing promo or like radio interviews. Different city, same routine. Do our sound check. Maybe have a little bit of dinner. Possibly some more interviews. <laughs> Yeah, play the show, meet and greet, and then go home and go to bed. And then do it. And this time round, I'll be doing it all with them. There's a lot more people coming to our show, isn't there? Really? Are you selling out? Yeah. Yeah. We're sold out, I think. The whole tour? Every single show on tour, except for like one. So you've got diehard fans now? We had one guy who came to our Toronto show and he skipped school for three days. The tour schedule is relentless. <laughs> Glasgow, Dublin, Manchester, London, LA, San Fran, New York, Denver, um, Kansas City. Caleb, take over. Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, Toronto. Portland, Seattle, Seattle, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, Sydney, Melbourne. Adelaide, Adelaide Perth, Perth, Brisbane. Brisbane. And then Wellington, Auckland and Christchurch. And then three days off. And then London. <laughs> Tonight they're performing at Echo in LA's most hip suburb. Look! Looks like we're in the right spot. This is the spot. Everybody plays here. And there's extra pressure on broods to get it right. Tonight, you know, it's, it's one of the big shows for us. We've got uh, people for bookers from TV shows such as Alan, I think Jimmy Kimmel, and it's just one of those nights where there'll be all sorts coming out, being invited as guests, and 
Yeah, as well as the fans. So I'm trying to help yeah. them keep their nerves at bay. I've never been in one. Never I've never been. been in one. We are having a first moment here, first photo booth experience. Let's go. Awkward family photo. Awkward family photo time. Black and white. Black, Black and white. It's where the locals know all the big acts come. And tonight, they're lining up to see Broods. How long have you been here? Uh, since five o'clock, so three, almost three hours. And why are you waiting so long? Uh, I want to be up front and dying to see him, yeah. And so and this is where Lord played her first ever gig in America. And now, it's the I turn of the Broods. Have you ever worked this hard at anything? No. All your Absolutely time and all everything. your effort and like physically and mentally it's just kind of like you just have to give every single last bit of you because you know that's kind of all you have left sometimes. <laughs> Next morning, we trip down the Hollywood Walk of Fame in sweltering temperatures to... Well, just the most famous building in LA. OK, so this is it, the famous Capitol building. And this is your label. I guess we'll give you a tour around. Here yes, right. please. They came here as nobodies, and now they're sharing studios with the biggest names in the business. There she is. There's your Katie. And your Beatles. Your Beatles. Hi, Katie. When broods are in town, this is their office. No camera crews are ever allowed down here, but somehow... Kiwi accents. <laughs> We've got it. Our studios are down here. Yeah. Pictures on the walls. I'm like all these amazing artists, as you can see. Yeah. yeah. All singing into Frank Sinatra's mic, which we also got to do. Every time we tell people that we sing into Frank Sinatra's mic, and they're just like, I'm joking, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, now that we think of it, it sounds like a joke, doesn't it? <laughs> when we signed the contract here last December, the president of Polydor UK had never, he hadn't met the band. No one had seen the band play. They literally, he met the band two minutes before they signed the contract. He said, I've never, I've never done this. I've never signed a band without having met them before. With that deal comes a taste of the high life. Hollywood sign right up there. Is it? At times like this, you get those pinch me moments. When do they happen? Most days. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. When we experience things like this, that's when it kind of it hits you like a ton of bricks and you just kind of want to just absorb it. You're actually following a path forged by Ella Yelich O'Connor. Do you feel an expectation to be the next Lord? Ella's bloody amazing and she's like one of the most talented girls I know. So. Yeah, I mean, to be put in the same box as somebody as successful and as strong as a, like, career-wise and person-wise as her is not really an insult at all. <laughs> like, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's quite a compliment. Do you let yourself ever dream that that kind of success could happen for you? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's one of those things that's almost it's not so out of reach anymore. Like, I have kind of lay in bed and thought about what I would say if I was accepting an award, but... <laughs> I don't know how haven't. much... I've been doing this... I'll just stand like, there. Uh, you'll let her do the talking, eh? <laughs> like Auckland's Sky Tower, Capital Spire lights up for special events. Hollywood's 50th anniversary, 
We had a blink on um, Pink Floyd, and then recently we had a blink on um, Katy Perry. So now it's back to um, of Hollywood. Fifty bucks. We change it. We say Broods. <laughs> <laughs> broods. You can do that. Flash Broods. It's we'll, quite a short name. <laughs> we'll talk off camera. Okay. 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 <laughs> While we're in the swing of dreaming big, I thought I'd give them a taste of just how big they could get. What'd you think? I thought that was pretty cool. It's probably oh, one of the coolest places in LA. <laughs> oh dear. What? You gotta have a gap in between the stars. That's not how this works, Erin. What do you reckon? That's pretty amazing. One day? Maybe. Almost looks like it's. It's real. I think it's the th fact that it's kind of peeling up in the corners. Like you mean the sticky tape's coming Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And best of luck for the rest of the tour. Yeah. yeah. We'll see Two you more back. shows to go. Yay. How are you handling it? Good, good. Yeah? I'm yeah. exhausted. Are you looking forward to getting home? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. It's a brutal industry. We're in there and, and um, we have to do everything we can now because tomorrow the buzz dies, and when the buzz dies, the bu you know, it goes really fast and it goes cold, and suddenly those phones don't ring. The guys are literally working so hard. Um, I wish I could give them more days off, but it's just not possible at this point in time. We're, we're, we're having to manage that because we know that time is precious and the opportunity is small, so that, you know, the window is small, so we're doing everything we can right now. After a hundred shows in more than 50 cities, another airport, another gig. Hey, people. Hello, beautiful. But this one is special. Their home. We didn't really appreciate how um, calm and peaceful it was when we were living there because we were kind of like, yeah, let's go on go out and see the world, la la la, and then like when we do it, we're just like, man, I could really do with a bit of Nelson right now. <laughs> a chance to see family, Mum Paulette and Dad Gary. So family life, has it changed much? Well, I guess it has in the way that, you know, other families might have their children around a little bit longer, and to have two scooting the nest at the same time, um, we had to get a dog, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we needed some more children. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but yeah, like when we get them home, like we had dinner last night, it was just there's no, it's just nice having them there. Fire! Get out of the water! For me, what makes me most proud is that they are themselves. They're still humble in in their interviews. They talk about family a lot and how important that's been in their lives. Mm. Um, they're working so hard, like, they've been incredibly busy. They haven't got time to look at themselves in the mirror and think they're, they're special. And, and that's the nice thing about it, is, and hopefully that carries on. You know, they can look at themselves and say, well, we've been given this gift of talent, and, and we're just using it the best we can. Saturday night, it's a full house. Playing at the Theatre Royal going to be really cool because well, I'm like, I'm so excited for it. And there's no mistaking, it's a hometown crowd. I am Georgia and Caleb's grandmother. Aww. And I'm very, very proud of them. I used to play lawn bowls with Georgia, so. Can we have a show of hands? Who's related to Georgia and Caleb? All of us. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember. But that was just one night. Now it's back into the machine. Auckland! If someone told us this like six months ago, we'd be like, piss off. <laughs> this is like this is incredible, like what we've done so far. And these two are ready for when that machine spits them out as the next big thing. It's 
it's feeling all right. What's happening for you now? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it feels better than all right. Yeah, it's just a little bit really good. <laughs>